Hello there, it's Rod and Joyce with our next instalment of our um, services from Bearwood Baptist Church here. Welcome. Uh, this weekend is uh, Palm Sunday where we remember Jesus uh, approaching Jerusalem uh, and coming, uh, uh, riding on a donkey uh, towards uh, the uh, fulfilment of his ministry. So as we start our service today, uh, just ask Joyce to read from Zechariah's Prophecy, chapter 9. Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. Righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fold of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim, and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Lord, we do rejoice greatly in this day. We rejoice because our King is coming, King Jesus, righteous and victorious, riding on the donkey, the donkey of peace. And you will proclaim peace to the nations. We thank you, Lord, that you do that today. You will free the prisoners, the prisoners of hope. And Lord, we do feel like prisoners of hope at this time of confinement. Help us, Lord, to rejoice in you today. Amen. By way of worship, as we continue, I'm going to read another new song that we're learning. Uh, again, it is one we, we heard at the beginning of the year, and I thought it appropriate for this Sunday. It's called The Goodness of God. Again, I will put the link to a YouTube recording of this song uh, at the bottom of your screen so that you can look and sing along with it after we finished. I love you, Lord, for your goodness never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath, that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. And all my life, you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath 
that I am able. I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Praise you, Lord. Now I'm going to invite Joyce to give us uh, our notices for this week. Hello, everyone. Notices for this week. There aren't any, except to remind you, please set aside an hour on a Tuesday evening at 7.30 so we can pray together. Although we're not together bodily, we are together in spirit. So please do set aside just an hour on a Tuesday night. Baptist Union are setting aside specific times for prayer. That's every Sunday and every Wednesday at 7pm. It's good to set aside some more time for prayer, so do check out their website, it'll tell you all about it, and uh, see if you can join in prayer at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays and Sundays. Now, at this time where we're all locked away, there's an awful lot going on still in churches, individual ones, so can I encourage you to check out Bearwood Chapel's website? Sorry, not website, it's their Facebook page. They do elevenses with the Gervins every day at 11 o'clock and they're bite-sized pieces of scripture and a short talk and some prayer time. So do catch that, it's really good. And then every evening, Dave Williams, their leader, he does um, a session on like a thought for the day and a time of prayer. Uh, If you're not on Facebook, I think you can get them on YouTube, but they're well worth a look, so don't forget and have a look at that. I do believe that's all the notices for this week, and I have no idea whose birthday it is because no one's been in touch, so I'm assuming we're all staying the same age this week. Now, offerings. There's no one here, so I can't send the plate rounds. But I'm sure you'll be putting it away each week, like good people that you are. Well, that's the notices, the birthdays and the offering done, nice and short. So I shall get on with the next reading. Now this reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, reading from verses 11 through to 18. So that's John 10, 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. Amen. Thank you, Joyce. In such a time as this, we may be feeling different feelings. And we're dependent, aren't we, on uh, various news outlets, whether it be television, radio, online, for the news, for what's happening. And I wanted to ask at this time, who are you listening to? And when we're feeling pressure, are we going to reach out or are we going to close ranks and just look after one another in our little fellowship? 
And are we in danger uh, when we're feeling under pressure of just feeling sorry for ourselves and adopting a victim mentality that we don't deserve this? Well, last time when we were here, we were looking at Jesus as the gate for the sheep. And now in this next passage, he extends this mixed parable, this picture of God's pastoral care for us, saying, I am the good shepherd. And an enduring picture of God's intended leadership, the, the shepherd, since David fought Goliath, and as he explained to Saul at the time, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. And David's words remind us that the shepherd was not a quiet job. It was a hard job, demanding Shepherd was never off duty. He had to be vigilant and patient and fearless. It was a vocation. The shepherd carried a bag of food, a sling to throw stones with, a staff that was like a club, and a rod, a shepherd's crook. And the shepherd led his sheep from the front picking them up if necessary and carrying them over obstacles. It was a costly business, often involving suffering for the shepherd. But after David, this shepherd's image became for the prophets a theme of failure and an indictment of Israel's leaders. So Ezekiel says, Woe to you, shepherds of Israel! who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not care of the flock. You, you have not strengthened the weak, or healed those who are ill, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered, because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. So the shepherd leaders failed to care or address the needs of their flock and instead had exploited and plundered them. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, the worthy one, the beautiful model shepherd, he is fulfilling God's promise that he himself will be their shepherd. And in our reading, he describes how. Firstly, his voice is listened to. He calls us by name and we follow the voice we know, just like the mixed herd sorts itself out into individual flocks. We don't follow a set of rules, we follow a master. We don't follow hired hands who are just in it for the money, after their own glory, not caring about sheep. We don't follow voices we don't recognise, false messiahs. We run away from them. Our salvation depends on knowing our shepherd. 
Secondly, his flock is greater. He has other sheep beyond Israel. So Jesus sees the crowds and has compassion on them because we are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus leaves the 99 and goes to look for the sheep that wandered off. His salvation is for all, the Gentiles as well as the Jews. He is unifying one flock with one shepherd over all. And thirdly came a new idea from Jesus, that the shepherd is ready to die for his sheep. He knows the risks. His love for the Father God is the reason for his sacrifice. He won't be losing his life, he will be giving it up. He isn't being dragged to the cross, he is choosing to go there an act of obedience to his Father, a death that is not the end, but brings resurrection glory afterwards. And this is the servant shepherd that Isaiah had predicted. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. This is the mystery. The shepherd becomes the sheep and dies in our place. This is the shepherd who later calls Peter the betrayer back. Do you love me more than these? Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Take care of my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. And so Peter later in his letter appeals in turn to the elders after him. As a fellow elder, and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who will also share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. So in conclusion, in these strange days we're in, we need to be careful and choose wisely who we listen to, the good shepherd. Like Jesus, we need to look beyond our little flock here in Bearwood to others he is keen to bring in and look out for our neighbours, friends and family who may need a comforting word from us from on the phone. In Jesus, we can look forward to a, an Easter of hope. There is something beyond our suffering. There is new life which will be worth waiting for. Amen. A moment just to reflect on what uh, the Lord is saying to us. Because your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. And all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. The Good Shepherd. I'm just going to invite Joyce.
to help us reflect on what we've heard by reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Spend a moment to pray together. Let's pray. Cast all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. Heavenly Father, we turn our hearts to you. You are utterly faithful, and you have never failed us. Grant us hope, strength, and mercy in our time of need. Enable us to throw our cares upon you, our mighty God. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those touched by the coronavirus, those who face sorrow and fear, those who face illness and isolation, we ask for your compassion, your love, your healing, and your kindness. Make us a people living in your perfect love, that we may drive away fear. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for wisdom and clarity for those making key decisions, for scientists and medical ex experts, for politicians and public health officials. We pray for acts of kindness to spread in every community. Enable us to be quick to see the need and respond in gracious and loving ways. Take us through this time of trial. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, thank you for sharing our Palm Sunday worship with you. We're all flying our Palm Sunday crosses uh, on this day so um, please join with us in that maybe put it on your door um, if you're celebrating uh, by way of a blessing i'll just start, ask joyce to read from hebrews chapter 13 thank you now may the god of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>